Welcome, Welcome to Dan Brown's Brown Universe. Hey everybody! I, I I'm back this week. Last week I was I was just barely in last week's episode. I gave my episode of Dan Brown's Universe to my brother, and he went crazy. I mean, my brother is crazy, but he went crazy. Er, my brother went on a space journey to find a space carrot to give to the space rabbit, so that the rabbit would tell him if he's dead or alive. And he had to find this like cardboard box full of. I mean, I, you could just watch it if you haven't. But seriously, I'm, I'm sorry if that caught you off guard. I, I didn't know what to expect, and so, I mean, you didn't even know it was gonna, I mean, I'm, I owe it to you guys. I owe it to you, my viewers, this week, to have a completely and totally normal episode. So this, this week is dedicated to just being not weird. Let's do it. This week's interesting viewer is Jonah Dvorak. Jonah is interesting because he was the first person to ever solve a Rubik's Cube while riding on an inverted roller coaster. You know, one that, one that goes, and just video. <laughs> Check out more of Mr. Dvorak's videos at youtube.com slash Jonah Dvorak. Oh yeah! If you would like to be my interesting viewer some week, please send me an email to danbrownuniverse at gmail.com with your name, where you're from, what makes you interesting, and a picture or a video of what makes you so interesting that you should be an interesting viewer over on my other viewers. Ugh. Let's go to some mail. Hi Dan, I have a question for you. How many emails have you gotten since you started DBU, and do you have a job? If so, doing what? Sincerely, Hjortur Freyr Johnson from Kopavogur, Iceland. How was that? All right, Mr. Hjortur Freyr Johnson, I did a check on this, and to my email address, which is danbrownuniverse at gmail.com, I have gotten 1,081 emails in the yeah, couple of months that I've been doing this. And that's, that's not including spam. Secondly, se oh wow, my voice just cracked. I don't have like a real job right now. I am a YouTube partner, but I mean, I used to have a real job. And I worked at a place called Mail Sort Professionals. And what we did is we had big contracts with like uh, emeritus and like banks and like I, big, big big companies that send out lots of mail like insurance companies and things and what we do is we take all their mail and we sort it out by zip code with pre-sorting and basically the post office would give us a discount for that and we'd pass some of that discount on to our customers and yeah and I, I, I just worked in the back room and it was great oh and my boss was David my friend we got more mail more mail I want to know if you believe that pennies should be taken away from U.S. money because of how much they are unused. People throw them on the street and ignore them. Shouldn't every price end in a five or zero just to make it easier? I don't think- I accidentally didn't write down the name of that person. Oh well. Yes! Thank you! I hate pennies! Whenever I have pennies in my wallet I, and there's a take a penny thing, I just take them all out and leave them. You know, take a penny, leave it. Yeah, I, blah, ooh, I hate pennies. I pulled up some statistics about pennies. The U.S. Mint says that this year it costs 1.73 cents to make one penny. And that the metal inside of one penny is worth 1.12 cents. I mean, that, that means that if you take the penny, which is worth one cent, and melt it down and sell the metals inside of the penny, you get more money than the penny is worth. I could start up an illegal business doing that. Blah, 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 blah. We should just get rid of the pennies. There was actually like a bill introduced to Congress back in 2002 that didn't make it through to get rid of the penny, but I think it should have. It was like, get rid of the penny and then just round the prices to the nearest five cents. 
And I, it would be so much easier, but no, whatever, whatever. Good question. We've got one more mail time question. Hey, Dan, I have been following you for a little while now, and I have learned that you are a drummer. I, too, am a fellow drummer, and I think it would be cool if, as a segment of DBU, you play the drums. Thanks, Pat. All right. It's for you, Pat. I got in the mail this week was sweet. I'm gonna show it to you. This postcard was sent to me all the way from London, and it doesn't have a name on it, but you know, whatever. This picture of wooden shoes sent to me by Thomas Klinkenberg from the Netherlands. I like pie from Emma in California. This here Unity Tessellation is from Erica in Missouri. This is from Cameron in Hawaii. Shout out to all my friends at WHEA. Rubik's Cube painting from Trevor in New Hampshire. This right here is from Matt in Georgia. That's, that's me, I'm in the Beatles. <laughs> this is from Danny in New York. This is from Anthony in Missouri. And this is from Anthony in New Zealand. And you can find out more about what this thing is by going to my Pogo Bat channel and looking under my favorites. It's called the F-Box synthesizer. Not really the F, I mean, I just, I don't want to curse on air. Anthony, if there's a, if you're watching this, if there's any way I can get one of these, I would love to have one of these. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Ta-da! If you have something you want to send to me for me to put on my wall, send it to Dan Brown, P.O. Box 67054, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68506. Some of the stuff on my wall is like, I'm running out of room, so it's up there. It's up there if you send it to me, but here, let me, let me just... I gotta unscrew the camera. Five, five. See, I put some of the stuff like up a little bit higher. See, it's all up there. And some of it's down, like, behind my chair. It's there. It's there. It's there. Contest time. I need to remind you guys of the Great Food Tower Challenge. Back in episode 11, I challenged you guys to build as big of a tower out of food as you could that looked, like, really cool, and then to destroy it as cool as you could, and then it was a big contest, and the winner would be chosen by me, would then get a minute of time on my show for, for whatever. That is due Tuesday, July 29th. Post a video response to episode 11. And if you want more information about the contest, go back and watch episode 11 again. We'll talk all about it in there. To help spur your creative juices for making your food tower, I'm going to show you a clip of the food tower entry sent by the same girl who made this D. Like I said, this is due Tuesday, July 29th, and I regret to inform you that I'm going on vacation tomorrow, so Tuesday, July 29th is the next time I'm going to have an episode. I'll see you guys later, way later, um, so I won't be posting videos for a while. I still love you guys. Two weeks. Two weeks. Can you wait that long? Two weeks. Come on. Come on, baby. Just, just wait two weeks for me. All right, whatever, I'm out!
note to myself when I'm editing this, I did this out of order, so this should go earlier. But you can figure, I mean, I can't, I'm talking to myself. You can figure this out, though. Huh, you'll probably get a chuckle out of this. I'll probably get, because I'm you, okay.